So far, what has been your biggest day? Yeah, our biggest day was somewhere around like six, seven hundred thousand. Six hundred to seven hundred thousand uh, dollars in sales in one single day. We always talk about money, but money follows value, but people don't realize that value follows vision. So you have to have vision to create value, to create money. So when I wasn't surrounded by people that didn't have the same vision as me, I had, you know, I didn't feel like I was creating value and I wasn't making any money. I realized that the difference between people who make a lot of money and don't isn't the things that we say yes to, it's the things that we say no to. I think as a human, you're only motivated by inspiration or desperation. So I think that the inspiration, <laughs> the inspiration pulls me yeah. towards the things that I want, but then I always know that there's a feeling of desperation behind me that I need to stay away from. I sleep on the floor right now, like every single day to remind myself of the floor I was sleeping on two and a half Wait, years ago. wait, that's different. Oh uh, yeah, bro. That's Michael Jackson different though. <laughs> Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man asked Cass to get your man right. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. You see him change your life. Millionaire mindset, the best on earth. Blueprints of wealth and not a network. To get it while you can, and he's standing right here. He's coming out the boat and see black millionaires. Oh, yeah. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, we are taking you literally and figuratively inside the vault, which the vault is where we keep all the precious items, all the precious metals, all everything is inside the vault, right? But metaphorically, your vault is your mindset. Uh, and so our next guest, uh, is a powerhouse, right? I, I mean, like a, a humble, a quiet powerhouse, somebody who uh, I was first introduced to uh, on Clubhouse. Uh, and when I say this guy uh, is a genius, and I don't really throw that out, you know, so, so lightly, but uh, when you kind of listen to him talk and you uh, see, you know, how he works in his mind and the ideas and the game that he was dropping, I'm like, yo, we got to have him inside the vault. Uh, we have Mr. Justin Phillips in the building. What's up, My brother? brother I appreciate how you doing, it, man? Appreciate that was, you, that was man. an amazing introduction. Like, I'm flattered. Yo, man, I'm telling you, man, and and I and and they'll, you know, they'll 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 see. I'm putting pressure on you, but they'll <laughs> see the level of of bars or the level of genius that you have, man. And so, uh, you you are you are one half, right. You know, of support black colleges. Um, you know, I I love uh, you know, the brand and what you guys have been able to do. Fast out the Corey, um, and you know, I know, I mean, you guys have an interesting story on how. Uh, you actually like connected the yeah. sacrifice that you had you had to make uh -huh. uh, in order to 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 create a multiple seven figure business right. like y'all told me y'all dropping numbers <laughs> you're talking right heavy. you're talking spicy right yeah, now yeah 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 <laughs> y'all doing numbers numbers like you know what i'm saying and so you know i i, de I definitely want to get into all that but you know for those who you know never heard of you who uh -huh. don't know you um who is Justin Phillips Justin Phillips, just a kid from Houston, Texas, you know, born and raised there. The only time I got out of Houston was to go to college. I came right back. Single parent household. My mom was the greatest woman on earth. She raised me perfectly. Um, dad was in jail from age two up until 17, 18, around there. So didn't have much of a father figure in my life. But my mom always told me, you know, your dad wasn't there, so we'll do it together and we'll figure it out, you yeah, know, and that's yeah. all it was. So yeah. we stuck together and, you know, that's that. So yeah, yeah, without yeah. going all the way, you know, in and whatnot, but whatever yeah. you want, I'll, I'll answer. But, you know, not for sure. Bit. I mean, I, I want to tap into that a little bit, though, because, um, you know, having your dad in jail from two to 17 um, those are like pivotal moments, right? right? Uh, especially of a of, of a young black boy like yeah. growing up. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, you know, I, you know, my dad wasn't in jail, but my dad wasn't really around right. uh, in my life. So my mom raised me as well. Um, talk about that for me a little bit, like that dynamic of, um, you know, like like not having that father figure. Yeah. Like like how did that affect your life? You know, coming up. You know, I, it kind of comes full circle now because now when I think about it, I always, I always wanted a mentor. I always wanted help because I, you know, success leaves clues, and mm -hmm. you can find uh, help in mentorships. So I'm like looking for that actively. And then my dad, he was in jail, but then he got out. Mm -hmm. So you know, he had a chance to rekindle a relationship, mm -hmm. but he had uh, a family outside of my immediate family. Mm -hmm. So he went that way, mm -hmm. but 
uh, I didn't understand as a kid, you know, 13, 14, I was like, well, he came back and then he didn't want to be with me was mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Right. It was like, yeah. you don't want to be around me. So what am I doing wrong mm -hmm. that made you not want to be around me? Yeah. So yeah. my mom was just like, she sat me down. And she said, Justin, like, don't think like that. Yeah. You are a great kid. You're going to do amazing things. It'll be just me and you. We did this from 2 to 13, 14. Yeah. We can go from 14 to 48, yeah. however it is together, and we'll right. figure it out. Yeah. So not having that in my life made me want to have mentors. Yeah. And I didn't have a lot of my mom's friends, you know, reaching out to me. But she had a lot of, you know, real estate agents and stuff like that around, but not yeah. anyone that, like, put their hands on me and put me under the wing. It was like, we're going to take you somewhere. Yeah. So I found early on that you have to learn from mistakes they don't have to be your own yeah. and then also that you can find mentorship in literature and yeah. history yeah. so i can always look back and see what people did in the past or i can read a book and find mentorship there so that's how i kind of maneuvered that situation but i just found that you know you you, you don't need it you know yeah. and then it, it, you you need help yeah. <laughs> and, but you can find it in other places than people and yeah. then, but now obviously I leverage different people and relationships but as a kid I had to dive into books and be by myself all the time yeah. and just learn so yeah. that yeah. I think and were you an only child yeah, I was the only child okay yeah. and then so now uh, you get past that childhood um, or, 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 or also before we get past the childhood um, did the that thought process of potentially you know not feeling wanted did that um, you know, display itself in other areas? Did you, were you bad in school? Did you get kicked out? Did you fight a lot? Was that, was that nah, part of the trajectory? I really wasn't. I don't, and I don't know why I was. I think it's because yeah. my mom, she just didn't play. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, you know how moms get. Sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't allowed to bring a C into the house. Mm. If I did bring a C into the house, I got a whooping. Yeah. If I lied, I got a whooping. So yeah. now, now it's just like, look, you, I don't lie to my mom. Yeah. I don't bring bad grades into the house, and I yeah. don't act crazy because I'm yeah. a representation of her. Yeah. So that was just yeah, how yeah, I yeah. was raised. I so it, I didn't, I didn't act too crazy, but I feel like you know I was a kid. Most likely I was doing some sure. random stuff sure, here sure. and there, but yeah. I can't pinpoint of like if um if it made me feel any type of way. I know that at first I felt like abandoned or I felt like I wasn't good enough or yeah. like I wasn't worthy because yeah. of my situation with my dad. But other than that, I think that I I was I was decent. Yeah, but. All right, and so now fast forward, um, you know, you're, you're going into your, you know, your years of, 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 of adulthood, yeah. right? Um, you know, talk to me about that, that era. Are you, uh, you know, you, 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 you go to college, yeah. uh, at, you know, during college or after college, are you saying, listen, I'm a worker nine to five, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, like what was your trajectory? Um, I was a terrible employee. Mm. So like I had a job very young. So like 15, 16, I worked at Shoe Carnival. I've only ever had two jobs in my life. Mm -hmm. So the first one, I was just a bad employee. They were like, hey, go sweep the floors. And then I would go sweep and it would take me from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm, so wow. I would just stretch the stretch it all the way out so I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't think that I had just, I always knew that I needed to make money because my mom was like, if you want things, you gotta go make money to get them. So I'm from Houston, like I grew up seeing Paul Wall, Mike Jones, like I wanted a grill, I wanted a chain, like all of that. My mom was like, if you want it, go do something to go get it. Yeah. So I started selling candy. So, you know, the regular entrepreneurship thing. And that was like my first experience of rejection too. I was selling candy for like two, three days, made a couple hundred dollars, bought my grill, came back the next day, they called me in the office and poured all of my candy in the trash right in front of my face. Wow. And like, you can't do that on this campus or yeah, whatever. So yeah. experiencing that early on kind of helped out. But I think that I just naturally in my DNA was like, you can't work for somebody else. Yeah. It just wasn't my thing. I didn't deal well with people telling me what to do or when I could be where or when I could use the restroom, like stuff like that. So I always knew that I would get money somehow. I just didn't know that it would be this way. Yeah. So when I went to college, that's when I started experimenting with throwing parties and that's mm -hmm. how me and Corey met. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of just took things from there. Yeah, and so now, you know, you're throwing parties. So how, how, do, how does it transition from, you know, throwing parties to starting, you know, an actual clothing brand yeah. that is like killing the market? You, you know? know, it's interesting because I wasn't a part of the brand when it was being created. So Corey and his cousin started it together in 2012 mm -hmm. and me and Corey were just friends. Like mm -hmm. I would, I was in the first photo shoot. I made them their first Twitter, got them some followers cause I had a digital marketing background mm -hmm. and that's what I wanted to do. And then, you know, that was that, like it was, I was just being a good friend. And then we started throwing parties together. 
I skipped the grade, so I was in college like 17, 16. Mm -hmm. So I'm like 16, 17, making 10, 15,000 a month just mm -hmm. from parties. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm trying to get up out of here. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. telling my mom, I'm dropping out, like I'm straight. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, She's yeah. like, no, you're gonna be the first one in the family to finish, whatnot. Yeah. But it kind of transitioned into the way that me and Corey met. He was throwing a party. He was a sophomore, a year older than me. I was a freshman. And I was sitting outside because I wanted to see who's taking the money, who's throwing the parties, what does it work like out here? Because I was throwing parties back home, but I wanted to take it into college. So I'm sitting on the corner and he's like, yo, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you sitting on the corner? Like, that's weird, you know? And I was just like, I'm trying to get an understanding of what's going on, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, oh no, I could, I could rock with that because yeah. you, you like, not like the average freshman thinking, party, drink, whatever, you trying to get some money. Yeah. So um, they did their thing, you know, Corey and his cousin, they did their thing on and off, um, not doing any like crazy numbers, maybe like a thousand bucks, 1500 a month or whatever. And cause they had their own things going on. Mm -hmm. I went and got a job back home in Houston. Mm -hmm. And then one day Corey called me and was like, yo bro, like I wanna take this seriously. I know you got digital marketing background cause that's what you're doing at your job come work with me and let's do it together. And then I, I didn't take the chance to do it. I like procrastinated on it like six months cause mm -hmm. I got into a bunch of negative stuff, like just illegal stuff I shouldn't have been doing. Mm -hmm. And then it came a point where I had to make a decision like, are you gonna go all in on this side mm -hmm. and like follow the footsteps of my dad and my other family members and the people I was surrounded or are you gonna try to go start from the beginning and just do it the right way? And yeah. You know, thank God I chose the right way. Yeah. And then that's when me and Corey got together 50-50. He had $20,000 in inventory. Yeah. I had $10,000 saved up, yeah. sent it to him, had yeah. two pennies in my bank account. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't tell him that because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was my roommate. So right. he didn't need to know that I didn't have rent. So right. I was like, look, right. I ain't got rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't got enough food, money to eat. Yeah. And then I was uh, subleasing my apartment back in Houston. The first month I moved out, the subleaser didn't pay. Wow. So I had two rents and no money mm -hmm. and i was like well we gotta figure something out and wait 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 <laughs> wait 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 don't 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 uh we got we gotta slow down on that one so you telling me right um you know corey wants you know has this business yeah wants you to be part of the business right. uh he has twenty thousand dollars worth of inventory right. right and he needed money right right and so you become a 50 50 partner mm -hmm. and you decide you have ten thousand dollars right actually you have ten thousand dollars and two cents. Right. Right. <laughs> and so you send him ten thousand yeah. dollars. Like, what were you thinking? And I don't mean that in a like bad way. Yeah. But like, you have ten thousand dollars and two cents. Yeah. This guy, you become a partner in this business. Um, you are subleasing your house. Right. right in Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, don't have rent for that. No. Uh, because somebody didn't pay you. <laughs> right. You don't, you don't, now you, because you gave, you're going to give him this, before you even give him a 10000 you're about to give him $10,000. And once you do that, you'll have two cents and not enough money to pay your rent where you currently live in. Right. What were you thinking? You know, I was thinking that I had just moved to Atlanta and I was in a situation where in my one bedroom apartment in Houston, I was living with five people. Yeah. So all of my friends, and it wasn't like that in the beginning. I had an apartment by myself. I had a job or whatever, but my family, like my cousins and my friends, they needed a place to go. So I was like, look, just come live with me. But then I realized that it was just surrounded by like, you know, we weren't on the same page. I felt like I had greatness inside of me and I didn't see it out like, you know, it's with them i just didn't feel like they were on the same page as me essentially mm -hmm. so i was like you know what i just need to get out of here i don't got too much money i got a decent amount saved up but when i moved to atlanta and sent that money to him i was like i've been broke before i've been in an apartment with five people in one bedroom before i slept on the floor before so worst come to worst is it doesn't go well and i'm in the exact same position i was just mm -hmm. in so why not at least give it a shot? Yeah. So I came here for a new beginning. I came here to start something. Yeah. So let's try it and see where it goes. And wow. if not, I'm in the exact same position I was six months ago. Wow. And then we'll just figure it out from there. Wow. And so uh, now you give him the $10,000. Yeah. Um, what happens after that? What's the, you know, what's the, what's the trajectory? I'm immediately broke. Yeah. One thing I will say is that I want to preface this too because I had a little bit of money saved up. So back then I was like 18, 19, and I was like researching and whatnot. And I came across like blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I put like all of my money, except for um, the $10,000 I had into crypto. Mm -hmm. So like I had a little bit of a like little nest egg, but my mm -hmm. goal was like, 
long term swing trade mm -hmm. leave it alone don't touch it yeah. so in my head i really only had ten thousand. Mm -hmm. so after i did that um i was just like i was broke so i immediately was like i need to lock myself in my room mm -hmm. and learn how to make money online mm. and for the next 30 days i didn't leave my room mm. at all mm. i just sat on the computer 14 16 18 hours a day mm. and it was like i need to make some money online mm. and then within the first 30 days i was able to go from no money to like five thousand dollars a month mm. just managing people's instagram mm. doing like growth stuff for them and mm. that was it so from mm. there i was like all right i'm straight like let's mm. let's turn it up now mm. Hey, how you guys doing? Hold on, don't press that button because that's what I do every time I'm looking at an ad that I don't want to see. This ad just happened to be life changing. I just happen to own one of the biggest home health care companies in the state of Georgia. I can help you create your own. Just to give you a little bit of insight, I send out registered nurses, LPNs, and CNAs to take care of people inside of the homes that cannot take care of themselves. But guess what? You don't have to have any medical background and you don't have to have any medical knowledge. So if you're wanting to change your life and you have a passion for actually taking care of people, then go ahead and sign up for Home Healthcare Blueprint. I'll see you guys later. Nice, 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 nice. That's powerful. And then so now, um, you know, you're, 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 you're generating income, you mm -hmm. learn how to make some money online. Um, you, know, you know, at what point um, did you realize that that bet, that $10,000 bet, you know, that you made on, uh, you know, the business that yeah. you're now, a, 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 you know, part owner in was, was, was something, was a great, great decision. Immediately the next month, mm. like immediately after, like maybe a month, maybe two. Yeah. And it's because I had tried a lot of online businesses in Houston, but they just weren't working out. I didn't have like the proper mindset, like it just wasn't working. And then I was like, you know what? I learned different skills like running Facebook ads and Instagram ads, YouTube ads, Google. Like I learned all of those things, but I was just doing it for like random drop shipping products, dog leashes and like kitchen products and stuff. And I was like, you know what? This is a product that I can stand behind, that I'm a product of. Mm. Let me apply the knowledge from all of these failures that I had and do it here mm. and see what happens. Mm. And immediately when I started like running ads and stuff for the business, it just shot off. Mm. Like immediately. And then when you say shot off, give me give me some numbers, right? So like what yeah. was what was some of the numbers? It, it was it was modest, bro. I started with fifty dollars a day yeah. in ads, you yeah. know, and that was it. But I saw a four and a half return on my ad spend mm. uh, the day after I started the campaign. Yeah. So you know, it wasn't nothing crazy, yeah. but you know, it was it was good enough to like give me the spark to like, okay, this is something that could be scaled up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and I and I think I think that's really important that people realize um, that having a business, if nobody knows your business exists, yeah. right? If you don't have the visibility, right. um, then you're really not going to be successful. And so now. Uh, you know, putting in fifty dollars was fifty dollars a day, fifty dollars yeah. a week, right? Fifty dollars a day, day, right? Yeah. So fifty dollars a day, uh, you're putting that into ads. Uh, you're getting a uh, you know four and a half time return, but let's say you're getting you know what two hundred dollars, yeah, right? right. Um, that's literally like quadrupling your money, though, right? right? You put fifty in, you get two hundred out, right. uh, and then so you know at uh, at what point do you do you say all right now this thing is working? Let's 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 turn up the dial a little bit, yeah. or you know what, what was was that the uh, the catalyst was like what what tipped you over? What was the tipping point? Yeah, you know for for, for support black. I think black it, I think it was when like we started to get some influencers. Yeah, and then also I want to say this too because I don't want people to think like oh I just started and it just instantly started working because yeah. that was the case, but it took me multiple like months to like get my mind right to be able to do that. So yeah. like I always say that my biggest mistake was like. One, not moving away from negativity in Houston and then getting to Atlanta faster because mm -hmm. that six to like eight months that I procrastinated on that, I can only imagine if I was putting in the work I am now mm -hmm. for six to eight more months, how much further along we would be. Mm -hmm. And then also just like the analysis paralysis, like I was just so stuck on, I need to do everything perfectly right. I need to structure my campaigns mm -hmm. perfect. I need to have the perfect creative. Mm -hmm. And then one day something just told me, it's like, bro, if you don't press go on this right mm -hmm. now, yeah. you're never going to do it. Yeah. And I said, you know what? It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be all the way right, but let's try it and see what happens. Yeah. And then that's the day when I did that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, bro, like I wanted to make sure I said yeah, that. Yeah, for I sure, for sure. No, 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 I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And then now... Uh, you know, the tip of point happens when you yeah. start getting influencers. How, yeah. how do you, you know, how do you, how did, how did you get influencers? Oh, like, man. how did that happen? Influencers, we was just reaching out. Yeah. Like, so early on, I realized that the difference between people who make a lot of money and don't isn't the things that we say 
yes to is the things that we say no to. Oh. So I was just like, okay, I'm saying yes to all of these things, but what am I saying no to? So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, look, I need to say no to everything that does not make me money in this business. Mm, yes. And I realized that there was three major things that made me money. There was reaching out to influencers, there was studying paid ads, and there was building community. Mm. And I was like, all day long, all I'm gonna do is those three things, yeah. and I figured that my income would increase. And yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. So I was just like, for influencers, to answer your question, I was reaching out to 10 to 15 influencers every single hour, every single hour, like all day. Wow. So like for multiple months at a time. Wow. So it's like 10, like every like alarm yeah, yeah, on my yeah, phone, yeah, 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 like yeah. alarm goes off, same DM to 10 people. Yeah. Oh, cool. No one, like one person hit back. I bet like, cool. But it was like having the resilience to do that for multiple months and like years at a time, yeah. like for real. And then that's how we got a lot of our, our bigger influencers to like really rock with us. Cause I found that if I reached out to them and I say something like, Hey, um, I want to offer, are, do, are you offering any paid promotions right now? Uh, you know, I think our message aligns with what you, what you do, something like that. Mm -hmm. They, we initially qualify ourselves because we're paying customers. We're looking to exchange value. Yeah. So we're not like someone that like, please wear our stuff, like whatever. Right. So then what happens, they come and see, and then they say, oh, I love what you're doing. Like, yeah. just send me something. Mm -hmm. And then that turned into, you know, one person turned into the next mm -hmm. and then it kept going. And then the real tipping point was like, probably like Chris Paul, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. was a real big one for us. Yeah. That was like one of our first like 30, $40,000 days. Nice. And we was like, okay. Wait, like, you said 30, 40,000 days. Yeah. Like, so you made 30 or 40,000 in a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that was like, okay, that's a tipping point to where I was like, yeah. yeah. So initially getting influencers, literally sending that message. Hey, are you offering any paid promotions right now? If so, what's your size and address? Mm -hmm. That way influencers are busy. So I can just get all of the information that I need in one message yeah. because I don't want to break it up and then they might not respond. They're busy people. It right. makes sense. So right. I need all the information that I can get from you within one message. That yeah. way, right when you respond, your package is going out. Right. And then the only follow up that I have is, hey, this is a family owned business. Yeah. Corey's blood sister was our first employee. Yeah. Hey, this is a family owned business. Every dollar that we make is going back into the business. The only thing that I ask is that you please just tag us when you post. Mm. Anything else me like that would be a blessing mm. to us. So pulling on the heartstrings a little bit. Sure. So that's kind of how we, you know, catapulted the influencer market. Wow, wow, wow. And so now, uh, so you have this brand, uh, you started getting influencers, you're doing ads, mm -hmm. uh, and then now, uh, fast forward for me, what, so far, what has been your biggest day? Biggest day? Yeah. Oh, man. So you said 40,000. Oh, no. Uh, biggest day might like six, seven hundred thousand. Maybe a little more. Say, say, say that. Say that. Say, <laughs> say, say it again. Say, say, say it louder for the people in the back. Say it louder for the people in the back, please. Yeah, our biggest day was somewhere around like six, seven hundred thousand. Wow, six hundred yeah. to seven hundred thousand uh, dollars in sales mm -hmm. in one single day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and then and then what would you say? Um, you know, between the time that you started, mm -hmm. right, where you're doing fifty dollars per, you know, per per day, right. Uh, to now getting to a, a, a day, mm -hmm. being able to sell six hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars in right. sales, uh, what would you say has been sort of like the difference, or the or or or, or what you know yeah. what what strategies have changed? Like how, what what got you there? The crazy thing is that it was really just focusing in on the things that I always talk about, really getting an understanding of paid ads because it's something that you can constantly learn. Mm -hmm. So. When I first started, I didn't know too much, but yeah. now I've been doing it for years. I know a decent amount. Yeah. Then also community building. We post so much content. Like now we making sure that we're just posting valuable content, but yeah. doing it consistently. We post four times a day. Yeah. So and it's valuable content to where we feel more so like a media company where people are coming to we get their attention mm -hmm. by the value that we provide through, to them via news about our audience black culture events, mm -hmm. you know, different things about black colleges. Yeah. And now they come and we have their attention, but then we just happen to sell on mm -hmm. the back end. So deep understanding for paid ads, deep understanding for community building, grassroots marketing, every single event that had a black person in sight, mm -hmm. we're there, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. We, you know, the first time uh, homecoming tour, we did seven homecomings, just me and Corey. Yeah. The next year we did 17 mm -hmm. and then now we got messed up last year, but it's all good. Yeah, and yeah. then when we come back, we'll do every single one. Right. So really in the field as well, like building yeah. the personal connections with our audience yeah. and then, um, you know, uh, content creation. I yeah. mean, like those four things, it's just the biggest things that we always harped on. And yeah, we no, just, I love it. And, and, and so, you know, you know, you said something that I want the audience to catch, right? You said, 
Uh, you focused on content creation, mm -hmm. uh, giving your audience the content that, yeah. that they want, and then you sell them on the back end. Yeah. So what, like, what does that mean yeah. for the for the layman person who's like, how yeah. do you, what, like, I, I give you content and right. then I, yeah, I get sold to on the back end. Like, what yeah. does that mean? So essentially, we're just trying to gain attention because yeah. we know that the attention of these people or just humans in general lives on a few places, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, all of the places that we know. Yeah. So I need to be able to garner the, the consumer's attention and let them know that I'm around or that I'm providing some type of value so that they're willing to exchange money with me. So my goal was just like a, you know, a meme page. Mm. You post a bunch of memes, you get a bunch of followers, and then now you can drop ship a meme type product. Mm. It, it, you, the goal is to get attention, uh, Neo, Josh, all of them way, where, uh, the, where money go, or attention, where attention goes, money flows. Money flows like, yeah. So we're just trying to get as much attention as possible, yeah. and then we sell to them on the back end. So that just really means that we gain as much attention from our audience by providing value, yeah. and then once they are in our community, yeah. then we provide them with something that we have to offer. And then yeah. if we provided enough value for them, then hopefully they'll exchange money with us. Yeah, no, nah, got it, got it. And, and, you know, selling to them and providing them, you know, this... Uh, you know, solution or access to to your community. Uh, what does that look like? Does that look like you know, you know, uh, provide you know, giving content that has a call to action? Mm -hmm. Is it um, you know, uh, now that they watch your content, uh, you're you know, creating ads that target them? Is yeah. it trying to get them on your mailing list, and now yeah. you start to send them through your mailing list? Yes, yeah, a little bit of all of that. Yeah. I mean, you got email marketing, you got SMS marketing. Yeah. Um, you know, you got, there's just a bunch of stuff that folks aren't doing too that I see like, even with email marketing, you yeah. know, people might do like abandoned cart mess, uh, emails, but they miss out on so many other flows. You mm -hmm. have like your welcome flow, your abandoned cart flow, your browser abandonment, your customer win back. Like there's mm -hmm. so many things. So there's a bunch of different ways, but like you said, yeah, you got email, SMS, you got um, just a call to action with your regular content, but we usually have like 80% value content and then like 20% selling. Mm -hmm. So with the call to action, I mean, yeah. it's, it's nothing too crazy. You know, we provide so much value, we have the attention, and it's not like we're selling something that doesn't align with what they're already coming to us for. Right. We give them black news, black colleges, black culture, and we sell items for black folks, yeah. you know? So yeah. it, it's it, as long as we have their attention, it's like, it's not hard for them to resonate with what we're doing. Yeah, and so, um, how does it feel, right? Mm -hmm. You know, having uh, this level of success, right? Mm -hmm. So now, uh, you know, you 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 know, sing, you know, single parent home, mm -hmm. dad's in jail. Uh, you know, started to kind of almost shift towards that illegal route, but yeah. you know, make make the detour to, to yeah. fly right. Uh, you bet on yourself, right? You bet on your business partner. Um, and you, you know, you put this money out there, uh, but you immediately get to the point where you're, you're really uh, studying the business, and now you make this calculated, right? You take a calculated risk, mm -hmm. um, and now you're at a space where, um, you know, your your company is uh, generating multiple seven figures, mm -hmm. right? You know, annually. Um, how does that feel to be? Um, sort of like, on, you know, to, to have that level of success. You know? I mean, I'm just grateful, yeah. you know, like that's really it. I'm yeah. so grateful because it could have went the other way, you sure. know, literally everybody, all the men in my family have been to jail, still like doing negative things yeah. and whatnot. So it's just, I just think of it more so like as a, a beacon of light, kind of like, look, I was t two and a half years ago, I was sleeping mm. on the floor next wow. to four people, wow. like for real. Wow. So it's just like, I'm no different from anybody else. Yeah. So it feels more so like just grace and favor. Yeah. And it's just like, if anyone can see my situation, I'm no different than anybody else. Yeah. So yeah. I was just a kid that just sat there and read books. Yeah. And that's like, right. that was it. Right, so, right, right. right. Yeah. And so now, you know, you're at a space again of, of, of success. Um, you know, if you could go back uh, to 18 year old Justin, <laughs> Justice, uh, Justin, right? If yeah. you could go back to uh, eighteen-year-old Justice, John, I want to keep chopping up your name, right? <laughs> if you could go back, right? If you could go back to eighteen-year-old Justin, <laughs> um, what, what, what advice? What advice are you telling her? Man, to change her environment. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, I realized it was like, especially like even trying to work out. I'm like, well, when you got honey buns in the fridge or exactly. it's very difficult to not eat them so exactly. it's like yeah, yeah. all right so just change your environment because yeah. that's who that's what you're going to become yeah. and um 
you know, just try to learn as much as possible. Yeah. Um, man, seek mentorship, mm -hmm. whether it be in books or whether it be in history, yeah. just continue doing that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's the first thing that's coming to head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, got it, got it, got it. And so, you know, what, you know, uh, we're at a space where um, there are a lot of people who have a nine to five. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who uh, want to get into entrepreneurship. They're trying to figure things yeah. out. The pandemic showed them like, yo, I can't really rely on this job. I got to do, you know, do for self. Right. Uh, you know, you know, what, what, what would you, what would be your advice to somebody yeah. who's trying to figure that piece out? Man, my first thing is really self-awareness. Mm. Like that's the biggest piece to me because I feel like there's so many ways to get paid. It's like, there's so many different avenues. Even let's just say we talk about clothing. You have print on demand, you got drop shipping, you got screen printing, like there's just so many ways, but each of them comes with a different sacrifice level. Each of them comes with a different workload and each of them comes with a different understanding of business that you have to have for each different way. So that's just clothing. So I can only imagine the different possibilities of everything else. So it's more, more important to figure out who you are as a person and who you want to be as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. so that you can understand what you can handle in business and what you're willing to handle in general. Mm -hmm. Because when I first came into entrepreneurship, I thought it would be cool to have 100 employees mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, seamstresses all over the place and we're sewing everything mm -hmm. by ourselves. Like, I yeah. thought that was the way, like, yeah. let's create a thousand person business. Mm -hmm. But then I quickly realized that that wasn't something that I was willing to do because I was good at creating demand and customer service. So I need to operate in those things. So I gave away the other pieces that I wasn't good at. And mm -hmm. it takes deep self-awareness and humility to be able to do that. And be like, I'm not good at this. So mm. I had the, I think my advice to any entrepreneur is first to sit with yourself mm. because you need to understand who you are, yes. what you want to be yeah. and what you can handle because yeah. there's going to be a lot of trials, tribulations and resilience that needs to be had. Mm. So if you can't build that up first, then that might not be a journey that's for you. And that's yeah. perfectly fine because yeah. the end goal is truly happiness anyways. Yeah. So you don't need to be an entrepreneur making millions of dollars or billions of dollars. You can be an entrepreneur making 80,000, which was better than a hundred or less than a hundred thousand dollars, but you have freedom to be with your family and that's your level of happiness. And yeah. that's what you're willing to deal with. Yeah. There's other people that have ambition, but if you have ambition, then make your work ethic match your ambition mm. if you're going to do it. Yeah. So self-awareness yeah, all day. Self I, no, no, I love that. I love that. Um, and so, you know, when you, you know, now, now that, you know, you do have this level of success, um, you know, you know, how has your mind expanded, right? Like how yeah. has your uh, vision expanded? Like, yeah. is there, you know, is there, is, 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 are there bigger goals? Yeah. Are you, you know, like talk, talk to us about that. Yeah, there is. And that's why when you asked me earlier, like, you know, when you hit these numbers, like, what does it feel like? Yeah. And I didn't want to say it, but it's just, I was talking about this earlier with Daniel. It's just like, when you hit these things now, it just feels like a game. It's like, okay, like, can we do a million in a day? Can mm. we do whatever in a day? Yeah. And then it's more so like, I saw the picture, so I like meditate every day. I'm real weird. Like mm -hmm. I wake up early, read for an hour, meditate. The like world's do weird. My whole, like, yeah. like what you so, what you just said is actually normal. <laughs> but <laughs> so I do I do that. But when I like meditate and I see like my vision and things like that, it's just like the vision is so big. It's like these small wins don't feel too crazy because in grand scheme they're very small so yeah. even six hundred thousand or a million dollars or whatever it doesn't feel that big when you have seen already mm -hmm. but then also i use that to my advantage as well with the negative things that happen too mm -hmm. so whenever i'm going through something whether it be man money is messed up or this and that is going wrong yeah. i can say well i saw the vision already so right. wh what are we talking about right yeah. here right yeah, now because yeah. i already saw what's there for me yeah. so i'm not too much worried so yeah. Yeah. that's why i feel like i'm able to have like a really deep control over my emotions and my yeah. feelings yeah. and then i can direct them in whichever way i want them to go yeah. because i've seen what's to come already mm. um don't miss that y'all um and so i want to i want to tap into that a little bit right uh you said that um, so first of all, six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand a day is not even, um, you know, you know, a lot of money is relative, mm -hmm. right? A lot of money is relative, and I know that very well because, you know, there's some there's an entrepreneur right now um, who is excited about a thousand dollars, right? They make a thousand dollars, they're excited. Yeah. Uh, there is an entrepreneur right now who made ten thousand dollars, you know, in a month, and they're excited, right? right? There's an entre but but there's a Another entrepreneur that if they made ten thousand dollars in a month well, would like slit their wrists, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right, and so you know a lot of money is relative, and I and so I love 
uh, that you said that, right? Because uh, a lot of times what people do is that they allow what is uh, exciting mm -hmm. um, or what is, um, you know, a success to other people yeah. become their definition exactly. of it, right? Uh, but you said, nah, like I saw the vision already. Like I meditated, right? You know, the source, whatever your source right, is, right. right? The source gave you a vision. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that vision is so granular that 600,000 in a day, that's not even, right. you know, you know, part of that. Right. And I'm still learning that. Right. Like I, I was talking about this earlier too. It's just balance in yeah. general, because I struggle with that and I'll be candid too. Like I struggle with that too, because it's just like, well, do I celebrate now? Mm -hmm. You know, cause yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, we did good, but you know, my mom works, my grandma works yeah. like, you know, what do we celebrating if I don't get it so when people yeah, are like yeah, yeah, yeah. oh you did good and you mm -hmm. did this and that, I'm like okay cool but I don't get it because I don't need all of these things like I, I sleep on the floor right now mm -hmm. like every single day to mm -hmm. remind myself of the floor I was sleeping on two and a half wait years ago. wait that's different uh, yeah, bro. that's Michael Jackson different though <laughs> no no I'm gonna tell no no that's Michael Jackson different I'm gonna tell you right yo Michael Jackson would never put any of his awards up oh wow never Right, like that, like that's a real thing. Like he had Grammys and yeah. awards, and he would never. He left them in a box. That's crazy. I didn't know that. He left them in a box because <laughs> he never wanted to know. He never wanted to feel like he made right. it. He wa he wanted to get to. He wanted to get to a level that he's pushing himself to greatness. Yeah. And so you have you are sleeping on a floor to remind us. So. <laughs> <laughs> So a company, right, that's making six hundred thousand dollars, that you own fifty percent. You're a half owner of a company that is making six hundred. Make forget the day. Right. You're making multiple seven figures annually, mm -hmm. and you choose to sleep on the floor. Let, 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 let's 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 talk about that some more. Um, I, I got discipline instilled with me like really early. Yeah. So I don't remember what it was, maybe an article or video. And I was watching this guy who was, I was like maybe 16. I don't know. Yeah. He was like, he takes cold showers every day to like yeah. shock his body and all the natural benefits. But then to also, you know, be like, man, if only I could like work a little harder to be able to award myself a hot shower. Mm, and then wow. also like he slept on the floor too. Yeah. So to remind himself, like when you wake up, you know, there's things that are behind you. Like negativity was just behind me. I got away from it so I'm pulled by the things that are light and are good and mm -hmm. is success and health and wealth but then I'm constantly reminded by the things that are behind me mm -hmm. so I think as a human you're only motivated by inspiration or desperation oh. so I think that the inspiration it's a bar. <laughs> the inspiration pulls me yeah. towards the things that I want but then I always know that there's a feeling of desperation behind me that I need to stay away from. So sleeping on the floor or just trying to remain humble and like, bro, you was just messed up just a few years ago. Yeah. Like check yourself. Yeah. Like that type of thing is yeah. very serious for me. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's just one of the like practices I do. Yeah, yeah. And then it, do, do, you, do you see um, a time when you do, you know, when you are able to, to enjoy your success or yeah. Um, you know, do, have, have you seen what that looks like being able to, you know, tap into like what, you know, the success that you want and being able to enjoy it? Not really. Yeah. And only because like I'm struggling with it. So maybe yeah. you'll have a bar to give me to, to yeah, help yeah, yeah. me out. You know, yeah. I'm still young, like, you know, just trying to figure things out. Yeah. But I struggle with that because it'll be like, all right. I can go and spend 1500 on a car every yeah. month and it won't hurt too much. Yeah. And I can go and get a two, three thousand dollar mortgage on a house, whatever. Yeah. But then I'm like, well, then four thousand a month is going to equal up into whatever over the year. Then yeah. over five years, that could have been all used to better my community, mm -hmm. better my family situation, better yeah. my long term wealth. Yeah. So I'm fine with like I was talking to a friend yesterday. I'm like, yeah. bro, I will go to a seven hundred dollar apartment tomorrow yeah. and just put it all back into the family because yeah. I don't need all of this because yeah, I know yeah. it's fake anyways. Yeah. So like, where do I celebrate? So yeah. we, she was arguing with me like, you need to like celebrate and da da da. So yeah. I'm still figuring that out, bro. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. So. Yeah, no, 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 I like that. And, and I think that, um, I mean, man, if I, if I could unpack that a little bit, because I know for me personally, um, there was a time where I, I struggled with um, survivor's remorse, you mm -hmm. know, I, I would call it. Uh, because, you know, I had a lot of success early on, you know, it was a VP at a bank, 24 mm -hmm. years old, bought my first house mm -hmm. at 25, 
uh, you know, was making, you know, some great money as a banker, uh, CEO of a credit union at uh, 31 years old was, uh, man, I, you know I mean? I drove all the, you know, bands, like I drove yeah. all the nice cars and stuff. And so, you know, but part of, you know, I'm from the projects though, right? I grew up in the St. Nicholas houses and, you know, there was a, there was a time where I'm looking and I'm looking at my family and I'm looking at, you know, people that I, that I, that I love dearly, that I want to come with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, there was this, this, this level of, of, of humbleness and level of like, you know, this back and forth for myself. Yeah. I mean, but for me, um, one of the things that I just realized just universally, um, that the level of, uh, gratitude, mm-hmm. right. That, you know, to, to, to be in a, in a, in a, in a sp- specific space, uh, but the level of, of gratitude that I'm, that I am where I am and I have the ability to do certain things coupled with, uh, just being a demonstration. Right. Mm-hmm. And so for me, uh, you know, I'm at a space where, um, you know, I, you know, I believe in God and I believe that, that, that I'm made in the image and likeness of God, right. Mm-hmm. The most high. Um, and so if I'm made in the image and likeness of God and the most high, uh, the, the only way that I can prove God is by being that, right? Mm-hmm. So little G, right? And I, and I call it greatness on display, uh, what, yeah. the, what God is. And so for me, um, if, if I want to show people who come from where I come from uh, that it's possible to, uh, you know, to have and do anything that I want, then I need to be able to uh, enjoy the things yeah. that... Uh, they are aspiring to to show them that 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 it's you know that it's possible you know um, and so that for me um, I mean but everybody has their own yeah. journey you know what I mean but I think for me uh, that was one of the things that made me you know be able to sort of like enjoy um, you know you know the fruits of my labor but I also think that there's a balance right yeah. because. Uh, you know, um, you know, I always reference this. I mean, y'all, I know y'all tired of me talking about this book, <laughs> but I always reference the science of getting rich. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the reason why though I reference that book, because, um, it's one of the books, I mean, I read a lot of, you know, books on an annual basis So science of getting rich, the alchemist, Good. uh, richest man in Babylon and think and grow rich. Yeah. Uh, and also the four agreements are like five books that mm-hmm. uh, are on constant rotation. Yeah. I read them more than once, uh, but in the science of getting rich, um, you know, you know, Waddle, you know, uh, Walter D. Waddles, I think this is his name. Um, he talks about just the balance, right? And um, life is supposed to be balanced, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we have, we have, we have the, we have the body, uh, we have the intellect, mm-hmm. and we have uh, the spirit, right? And so, those are the three things that we want to uh, be fulfilled, right? And so, a lot of people. Uh, put too much energy in the body, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I want my, I want, I want to have fun, like the physical, right? right. I want to have fun, but they're not balanced. They have no spiritual practice, yeah. right? Um, and then, and then they're not, you know, giving back, or they don't have no, uh, you know, so, so, the, you know, they, they, they're not enjoying the money, they're not enjoying the spirit, right? And they're not physically sound. Um, but then there's other people who are super duper spiritual or super duper like, yo, altruistic, like I'm gonna give back to the community, but they're not, you know, focused on the intellect. They're Mm -hmm. not focused on the body. Um, And so, you know, really it's about having that balance, right? It's about, you know, have, you know, being at a space where uh, you could give back right? You can also enjoy the fruits of your labor, (laughs) right? And you can also, you know, you know, you know, feed the intellect, right? Right. And so it's really about, uh, you know, just having, you know, having that balance. Um, And then understanding that, you know, the the more uh, you enjoy your success, and the more you can uh, continue to get to a higher level of success, the more or the faster you'll be able to kind of help, you know, help your, your community and help, you know, you know, the people that, that you love. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think it's a balance, you know, yeah. I, and, and I, and I think that the, 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 the good thing about, um, you know, uh, questioning, mm-hmm. right. Uh, questioning your source, uh, is that once you, uh, ask the question, um, the answer happens. Yeah. Right, yeah. like that, like that's so you're in a perfect. You know what I mean, your mm-hmm. life is perfect, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're in a perfect position because uh, that level of trying to figure it out uh, says now, okay, here's the question, um, and so now uh, you know the universe is going mm-hmm. to now start to align you, yeah. right? Whether it's this interview, whether right. you have continue to have conversations, the universe is going to um, you know sort of uh, align you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, with the answer that's going to, you know, get you to that space. Um, and so I want to transition into, um, you know, j- just having, you know, that, uh, you know, that level of still saying, hey, I'm making all this money. 
uh, but I'm still going to sleep on the floor. I still, you know, I really don't have anything to celebrate. Uh, what would you say so far uh, has been the, the, the most extravagant thing you've done with money? <laughs> Maybe like took my mom somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't buy stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've, since I moved to Atlanta, I probably saved like 95% of my money. That wow. Month. Yeah. Wow. Like, wow. Just, and, you, and you still have money in crypto. Yeah. So you up, up. I'm still like heavily investing in yeah, stuff. Yeah, so you so. up, up. I'm doing decent. Nah, nah, you're not doing decent because you told me, listen, you said, because you, I, cause I do, I'm a numbers guy. I did the math. You, to, you told me when you start, when you gave that 10 grand up, bro. And, and so, listen, you told me when you gave that 10 grand up. And so by the time you, you put that 10 grand up and you still have money in crypto, you yeah. up, up, right? And you still save 95% of your income. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you like yeah. stuff that I bought. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Who knows? Like, yeah. I don't be buying too much. Yeah. You know? And so, and so, are, are there? Are, would you say are there uh, things from an impact perspective? Have you done mm. uh, impactful things? You know, which 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 your money? Yeah, I feel like because we we got support black colleges cares, so yeah. that's like our nonprofit. But we we haven't even done anything with it just yet. We've done it like all off the muscle, just like Mother's Day giving away money, just yeah. to like hey, text this number and we gonna bless you. Like give us your story. So yeah. we've just been doing a lot of that. I mean, that's that's pretty much our impact or even just like raising awareness really feels like impact for us too. Yeah. Because when I came out of school, I was a senior and I didn't know what a fraternity, like sorority, like none of that yeah. was. So for me, I think it's really impactful for us to even tell these stories or like talk about these colleges or this brand in general, because I didn't know any of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. So um, be to answer your question, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so how, how are you, you know, if, if you are right now, or planning to, um, how are you sort of um, diversifying your money, right? Yeah. Because, you know, one of the things that, that, you know, I mean, as a financial educator, you know, former banking executive, um, you know, I know that the worst thing that somebody could do is just leave their money in the bank, yeah, right? Um, and so what, what are some things um, that you are doing or planning to do to help sort of like, you know, diversify or multiply the money that you do have. Yeah, so my structure is like this, and maybe you can help me with this too. Yes, so 10% save, 10% tied, 75% invest, whether it be 25% in crypto, 25% in myself, 25% in whatever adventure I want to, real estate, whatever, mm -hmm. and then 5% to live off of. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's kind of how I've been structured. But mostly a lot of it has been going into crypto lately because mm -hmm. that's just like what I really believe in. Yeah. And I've seen like the dividend. So I just assessed it like, what's going to give me the best return, yeah. most likely either in myself or in crypto. Right, and that's right. what I've been on. And when, and when you say invest in yourself, what does that mean? You know, masterminds yeah. and courses yeah. and books and yeah. just that type of thing. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. And so are there, um, you know, from, from that perspective though, right? Because even, uh, you know, you have a lot of game, right? To be able to run a business uh, that's that's making six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 in a day, right? And to be able to do that, um, you know, are there, um, you know, things that you've learned? Um, are you at that phase? Have you created programs with mm -hmm. things that uh, will help, you know, other people learn yeah. that game? Talk to me so about that. So right now I just have an ebook out and it's called the last e-commerce ebook you'll ever need because mm -hmm. I like to feel like once you come and learn from me, you won't need to really go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I'm really the type that another thing that I kind of struggle with is like, I want to give it all away for free. Yeah. I don't, I don't need it because I make the money in the business. So why yeah. do I need to charge for the value? That's just how I be feeling sometimes. Sure, yeah. So I'll give it all away. But I also, you know, Neo, he got on me real bad. Sure, yeah. You know how he I'm gets. Sure, I'm and sure. I was uh, networking with him and then he was just like, oh, you did however much in a day. Oh, that's cool. But like you need to package that up because you can do the same amount in the digital side as well. Yeah. So I followed his footsteps there made yeah. an ebook. And then now I'm building out a course that's going to release on my birthday, July 12th. So 60 oh, days from today. Dope, dope. And now Are you just... good people. You a cancer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My wife's a cancer. July hey, 14th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, we right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah, my yeah, neighbor. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, you know, just putting that stuff together now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 I, and I think that, um, you know, I mean, number one, definitely admirable. Um, you know, to be able to, to, you know, to give away the, you know, the information. Um, but yeah, you know, de definitely a balance, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to uh, you dropping the course yeah. and really just, uh, you know, being able to champion that because I also think that, um, you know, the, the knowledge that you have is valuable mm -hmm. um, and that value uh, will be able to, 
uh, help other people, right. right, exponentially. So I love that. All right, so we're going to do a quick uh, a lightning round, right? right. Uh, and so the lightning round is really just kind of taking some banking terms, right? <laughs> uh, and then we take the banking terms and we flip them, you know, because we are inside the vault. Right. Uh, and so the first uh, banking term I'm going to use is deposit slip, mm -hmm. right? Um, and a deposit slip is when you, you know, you take, you take a deposit slip, you put money inside right. the bank. For us, deposit slip is a, a, a mess up, right? A month, uh, you know, a mistake that you made with yeah. money. Uh, what would you say so far has been your biggest deposit slip? The biggest deposit slip was, um, being, trying to make too much money too fast to mm. where I was naive and who I trusted. Mm. So I never even told anybody this ever. I don't even think Corey knows. Like mm. when I, um, when I came down to Atlanta, I saved up all of my money from the first year out here and it was like $50,000, mm. like somewhere around there. And then I got introduced to a, a friend and he was like doing real estate or whatever and ended up just getting finessed 50 bands. Wow. And it was just, you know, and still working through that. But I mean, I've been able to like sit, handle that and whatnot, which is sure. cool. Sure. But that was probably like biggest mistake. Wow, wow, that, wow. That and then what I talked about with like just opportunity cost and you know, not making the decision to change my life for the yeah. better six to eight months. It's yeah. just so much value there yeah. that probably could have been extracted. So yeah. those two yeah. things probably the biggest. Wow. And so, wow. So you, so, so you're, you're, you're looking, you take your money to try to invest this money to make money fast yeah. and then got finessed out of it. Yeah, bro. So wow. I don't even never told anybody that, but it's wow. like, yeah, like the first year. So imagine coming fresh off a of straight yeah. from Houston, 12 hour ride yeah. in our Nissan Altima, yeah. getting out, locking yourself in your room, making your money, yeah. then figuring it out, feeling like you figured it out, saved up 50, and then it's all gone. And then you wow. got to start all over again. Wow. And, you know, Whew. it was it was tough, but, wow. you know. All right, man. Ne ne next one, man. Um, <laughs> charge account, right? Or, or charge off, right? And so uh -huh. charge off uh, is, you know, when you have a credit card, you know, you don't pay the credit card, credit card companies going after you, but eventually they're like, nah, I need to charge off this debt. Um, you know, when you think about, you know, the journey that you've taken so far, uh, what would you say, what kind of people or mindset did you have to charge off on your journey? Oh, so like stuff I had to just... Yeah, like you done, dub it. Um, it was really just folks that, uh, that didn't have vision, I think, yeah. you know, and I don't say, I don't mean that to be negative because I think that everybody plays a position and a role in your journey as well. Yeah. But I found early that you know, we always talk about money, but money follows value, mm. but people don't realize that value follows vision. Mm. So you have to have vision to create value, to create money. Mm. So when I wasn't surrounded by people that didn't have the same vision as me, I had, you know, I didn't feel like I was creating value and I wasn't making any money. Mm. So I had to switch my environment from people that didn't have vision or didn't provide value to the opposite. Wow, that's yeah. a big bar. That's a big bar. I'm trying. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then last but not least, uh, ATM, right? An ATM machine, you put your card in and that's where the money's coming <laughs> out. But we inside the vault, so what comes out, right, in here uh, is those is those gems, is those gold yeah. bars, right? <laughs> and so for us, ATM is another teachable moment, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you think about uh, your life and the lessons that you've learned, uh, give us another teachable moment that, that's gonna, that has carried you and that can help somebody else. Man, that's a good one. Let me think. First thing that's coming to mind, I don't know, like whenever I think about this, it's really just gratitude. Like yeah. that's all I'd be living off of because I realize every day when I wake up, it's just like I was born to a mother that loved me. Yeah. My father wasn't there, but that's cool. I wasn't born in a third world country. I have a smartphone. Like yeah. these are all things to be very grateful for. I have yeah. running water in a house. Yeah. Like so I think the biggest piece probably is just to be grateful for the things that you do have. We've spent so much time focusing on that that we don't yeah. and we don't understand that the world outside is just a reflection of who we are on the inside. Yeah. So if I can change the world within, then I can change the world without. Mm -hmm. So I think that piece has really taken me far because I've realized that if there's something that I see in somebody else that I don't like or something that I see in whomever that I'm not resonating with, it's a reflection of who I am or yeah. what I see in myself that I don't like. So I think not Ooh. judging people, yeah. um, being grateful and I don't know, just realizing that, bro, I'm just yeah. like everybody else. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. that yeah. that's kind of pushed me. But like I said, also, you know, 
just sitting with myself, having that self-awareness and yeah. believing in my vision, bro. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. That's off the top. I don't know. No, no, that was perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> Listen, y'all, Justin Phillips, uh, one half of Support Black Colleges, uh, one of the biggest and baddest black-owned you know, uh, clothing companies out there, they're doing some great things. They're gonna continue to do, do great things. Uh, watch out, you know what I'm saying? Because I, you know, I, I love, um, you know, I love the story, uh, but, but now just even kind of getting inside your vault, right? Mm -hmm. Get inside the vault. Um, you know, I appreciate you even more, you know, because again, like I said, I heard you in, in, uh, at you know, Clubhouse yeah. and you were dropping some bars, uh, but just, just understanding the man, right? Just understanding uh -huh. Justin Phillips uh, was, was really refreshing and to just kind of let everybody know, right? Like, you know, you know, success is relative, right? Is that, you know, as you get to, to a certain level of success, uh, there is always this level of um, you know, you know, finding yourself, right? And I think that's the, the most important thing. Like I, you know, I always say that uh, I live. For, I, mean, I think I'm on my fourth or fifth life, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you know, I just said, I, you know, I've, I've done so much in my right. life. Uh, but the reason why I've done so much is because, um, you know, life isn't really about. That, that, I mean, there isn't a destination, right? Mm -hmm. Because if, once you get to a destination, you know, life is about the pursuit, right? And so you get to this destination, and then you're like. That's it. Yeah. And then you're going to, you know, right? You're going right. to keep wanting more. And so it's really about, you know, you know, you know, pushing yourself and challenging yourself. Yeah. Like you said, 600, all right, how can I do a million? Right. A million? How can I do 10 million, right? Yeah. Yo, 10 million a day? How can I do 100? Right? Like <laughs> that, like that continues to be the barrier until there's something else, right? Yeah. Until you're like, all right, I, you know, I did this on this company. How can I do this in a different company? Right? So there's always going to be this thing. Um, and so I think that uh, your transparency, um, you know, your, um, willingness, right, to show most people who would look at, you know, like people be like, yo, this dude crazy. Like, how he made this level of money? And he's like, he sleep on the floor. Like, he ain't spend no money. He ain't got a raise. Like, what's wrong with this dude, right? And but 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 I think that's real because, um, you know, number one, life is about balance, right? Um, you know, me being a banker, you know, banking executive for over fifteen years, I've always seen different levels of success. Yeah. I'm like, you know, there's a multi-millionaire that that wants to wear their, you know, money on their arm, right? But there's another multi-millionaire that's that, you know, that you know, wear t-shirts all the time, right. wears the same, right? And so it really doesn't, there's not one size fit all. The, the, the key, and I want everybody who's watching this to know, um, is that as we're bringing you different people, um, you know, tap into the ones you identify with, right? They're, you know, we're bringing you variety for a reason. Tap into the ones that you identify with, and then if, if, if that person's story connects with you, then, you know, then, then, then connect with them, right? Yeah. And so I know you touched a lot of lives, you touched <laughs> minds. If somebody wants to connect with you, where can they find you? Yeah, Instagram, at Iho Nation, Twitter, Ecom Justin P, Clubhouse Justin P. I'm trying to think what else we got. Yeah, yeah. YouTube. I just started a YouTube channel because now I'm paying my content guy to document me. So, so. Ecom Justin P on YouTube. So. Yeah. All right, y'all. We are closing out the vault. Another exciting and awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Make sure you you share this video. You tell people about the greatest money mindset show on the planet where we're bringing you nothing but heat, nothing but gold bars inside the vault. Make sure you tap in. Make sure you tune in. I am Ash Cash. I'll see you next time in God's will. Same time, same place. Peace. Won't ask cash, you can catch it right here in the ball.